Hey everybody, this is Wake Angel 2001 coming at you from my living room once again. Uh, so enjoy the blank wall. Now, um, okay, before I do anything, I first want to remind everybody to go to the link below uh, and vote in the uh, top 10 customs of 2019 thing that I have going on. Because, uh, yeah, like there's still nowhere near a consensus on what the top 10 figures are. And, um, like, there's been less than a hundred votes, and that's somewhat impressive to get a hundred votes, but, you know, like, this channel has 15,000 subscribers now, which, by the way, thanks for those 15,000 subscribers, that's awesome, but, like, a very small number of you are apparently active, either that or all of you are watching me on mobile devices where you can't actually follow the links in the description, so, like, if you're looking at me on mobile, then like find a PC, open YouTube there, and then follow the link in the description to vote in that poll so I can have a definitive top 10. Um, okay, that being said, it's not the, the topic of this video. The true topic of this video is about Pokemon Sword and Shield. And, um, and how I feel that I've been hearing a lot of complaints about the wrong thing. Alright, so everybody knows the big controversies around Sword and Shield. How it's the first mainline Pokemon game to not have any kind of ability to have the, the full roster of Pokemon. Like, even in Sun and Moon, when there was no National Pokedex, you could still use the Pokemon Bank to get the, the Pokemon that aren't in the Alolan decks just fine. And here you can't. Um, and then uh, there's... And then there's... Um, like, of the Pokemon that were removed, there were, like, some that people really like, like Scyther and Zoroark didn't get in, while some that other people really hated, like Garbodor and, uh, and Delibird got in. But, you know, beyond that, um, they announced the DLC, and everybody is acting like all of a sudden, Game Freak has turned into EA. Like, oh no, they sold an in they made an intentionally incomplete game so that they could complete it later and sell it to us as DLC! Which I find to be one of the most profoundly ignorant statements about the franchise I've ever heard of. First of all, let's, let's get to this. Ever since Generation 1, the business model for Game Freak has been put out the two versions of Pokemon, uh, then later on, a, some kind of deluxe version of Pokemon later on. Like... But like with Generation 1, it was Pokemon Yellow. With Generation 2, it was Pokemon Crystal. And on and on and on, all the way through the most egregious one, which was the Sun and Moon Generation, which actually had them release Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, two new versions of the updated one. Which, aside from a little bit of extra content and a couple new Pokemon, are almost exactly the same as their predecessors. So, like... How, how people feel cheated by having an expansion pack of DLC that costs half the price of the game instead of them selling, like, Pokemon Sword and Shield Armored Edition for another 60 bucks for us all to buy and start all over again. Like, that's beyond me. Like, this whole DLC expansion is actually an improvement over Game Freak's usual business model for how they release improvements to the Pokemon franchise. So, you are complaining about a step in the right direction. I mean, yeah, maybe they should have had the ability to update all the Pokemon into the game for for, uh, for no additional charge, blah blah blah, but you know what? Um, I'm living here in the real world where companies like to make money and exploit fandoms, um, but and, and we hold them to a certain level of accountability, but aren't expecting them to be saints. But yeah, seriously, that's the wrong thing to complain about because there actually is a real issue and that is the game's, the game's modes are like, like, okay, there's legitimate gameplay stuff that's not as good, worse, or outright missing from previous generations. Uh, first of all, like, like, there's no Megastones in this game. Like, Gigantamaxing and and um, and Dynamaxing have completely replaced like Mega Evolutions and the uh, and the Z attacks and all that stuff from previous generations, 
and it sucks. I don't like Gigantamax or, or Dynamax. It's lame. It turns your Pokemon into a giant Kaiju, which is kind of an interesting spectacle, but after that, the game becomes so impersonal and repetitive. Because Gigantamax Pokemon and, and Dynamax Pokemon can only use certain moves. Like, there's, um, there's, like, uh, like, like, like the, uh, Max Hailstorm, or, or, or Dynamax Lightning, or whatever the heck it's called. Like, like, you have the, you have the elemental moves, and that's it. Like, like, you can't have your giant Pokemon use Explosion and cause a giant Mushroom Cloud. You don't... You don't have, um, like, you, you lose your unique attacks. Like, like, a strategy is pretty much abandoned for raw power when you Gigantamax. That's basically what it is. At least with, um, with Mega Evolutions, you got some better stats out there, but you still had your own moves. You know, like, so there's still strategy. And, and sometimes, um, um, Pokemon that, that Mega Evolve have different abilities in their base form, which is kind of cool. Like, like, for example, one of my favorites was Lopunny, which uh, when it evolved into Mega Lopunny, it gained the Scrappy ability, so it could hit ghost types with fighting type moves. That was cool! So, yeah, like, we, we, we lost really cool game modes to get replaced with other lamer gimmicks that aren't as good, and people aren't complaining about that because all they care about, apparently, is the roster. Um, and... One, there's one mode that I probably spend more time playing than any other once I get to the end game of the Pokemon franchise, any, any game in the series. That's the Battle Tower, or as it was in Sun and Moon, the Battle Tree. This is where, um, where like, your Pokemon are all set to the same level, and you go up against oppo opposing trainers who also have their Pokemon at the same level, so it's all about how well you've been able to train, like, like, uh, whether you've been able to, um, use bottle caps to max out their stats, or you did good IV training, or, or, like, you put really good moves, and you have a perfect item for them, and, like, you know, that's like, where you really know your stuff, and you can really play the game with everything on a level playing field. Like, you can't, it's not like a gym training battle where you can grind up so that you're a higher level, or that your whole team is made up of Pokemon specifically that are strong against your opponent. You need to try and construct a balanced team. Like, I like the Battle Tree. That's a cool single-player mode. And, um, well, let's, uh, let's kind of take a look at it. So, here we go. This is it. You get the single battle, and you get the double battle. And you're allowed to change the music that plays when you do all the battles. And that's it. Like, huh. I mean, if you take a look at the Pokemon Moon version, uh, which is what I have, you have, um, you have multi-battles where two trainers face two other trainers, and then the double, so you have three modes here, and basically there's an easy and hard version of the two modes, and, um, and in previous generations, I remember Pokemon Y, it had all of those, plus even more modes, like triple battles, where you could have 3v3. And um, and rotation battles where everything was on a rotating platform, so you could you could you could switch switch in new Pokemon without having to swap out. So like it seems that every generation has been removing more and more stuff from the battle tower until like this is it. And furthermore, the battle tower isn't even as interesting as it used to be. Like, in the Pokemon Moon version of the game, um, the Battle Tower would let you face rivals and trainers from previous generations. You could actually battle against Red and Blue, you know, Ash and Gary from the G1 game. Um, and then you could, you could also face tougher versions of some of the gym leaders, or I guess they weren't gym leaders, they were the Island Kahunas, but... You know, still, like, you could actually face against the rivals, the gym leaders, uh, previous generations champions. That was awesome! You could do all that. Here, in this version of the game, you just face a bunch of no-name NPCs, and then after you beat the NPCs, you get to fight Leon. Again. Like, how many times do I have to fight Leon? They were building up how the fights against... How, how, like, Leon was built up as this huge, massive wall you have to overcome, and how 
beating him would be so special. And in my playthrough, it actually was a pretty grueling battle, which took both of us down to our last Pokemon, and I managed to edge out a victory against him, and it felt genuinely good. That one time. Then, I had to do it again. And again. And again, and again. And it got repetitive and boring because he it always happens the same way the only pokemon he ever gigantamaxes is his charizard and like you you fate he he swaps out his team but it's always the same six pokemon that he had when you actually faced him in the story campaign like really like that is one gutted play mode seriously there's like like it's like, nothing. Like, I don't even want to do it. Like, the only reason to play it is because you're grinding out BP and bottle caps so you can use them to max out Pokemon stats for competitive play. And, like, that, they, they, like, this game was supposed to be built in a way that eliminated some of that sensation of grind. Like, they even gave you XP candies and stuff so you could level up Pokemon without having to, to battle the same thing hundreds of times. But, like, like, here it is, the grind, it's back. And like, I'm not, I'm not saying you even have to change fundamentally, like, like, you don't even have to implement all the modes that would have made the game a whole lot better. Just give us different trainers to fight. Like, like, um, give us the other gym leaders. Like, you know how there, there's, there's gym leaders that are exclusive to the sword version and shield version. Maybe the battle tower would allow a shield player to fight against that sword exclusive gym trainer and vice versa. Hmm? Or maybe you could have tougher versions of the early gym leaders because, you know, the, the first three gym leaders are always shafted by the fact that they have to be easier so that, because, you know, you haven't really had a chance to build up your real party yet. So, like, this is Pokemon's real problem. Sword and Shield's real problem is the gutting of gameplay modes and how boring, repetitive, and impersonal battles can feel with a whole bunch of these features removed, and how grindy the battle tower has become. Like, the roster, okay, that's a thing, but it's far from the only thing. In my opinion, it's not even the biggest thing. These removed modes and how repetitive the new modes they gave us are, that's Pokemon Sword and Shield's real problem. So, I don't know. Like, am I am I just not watching the right people on YouTube? Because, like, everybody seems to just be talking about, about the DLC and... Oh, and by the way, you don't have to spend... You don't have to spend $180 to get everything. You only have to spend $90. Like, the Pokemon, you get you get one version of Pokemon, you get the expansion pack, and you're supposed to have a friend that you can trade with. That's always been Pokemon's business model. You don't buy both versions of the game for yourself, although Game Freak would love that. You buy one version of the game, a friend buys another version of the game, you trade. And, like, like get some friends. Nintendo's encouraging you to get friends. Like, I'm sorry if you're really isolated and this is hard for you, but... That's kind of the point of the of these whole split franchises. Like, if you don't have any friends who ever tr who, to ever communicate with ever, I feel really sorry for you. That's really sad. But also, like, I'm sorry, but that's kind of what this is supposed to be. Like, it's it's like complaining about a game being multiplayer. Like, I can't play this game because it's only a multiplayer. Like. Like, sorry, but not everything is about you. You don't have to do everything by yourself. So, yeah. Um, the, the DLC is actually an improvement on their business model from previous generations, and there's much bigger problems to the game than the roster and the Pokedex. So, yeah, like, let's get some perspective on what the issues are.